So I want to ask you a question, a very important question, if you will. Do you want max speed in your golf swing over here? Nope. Do you want max speed in your golf swing over here? Nope. Or do you want the gas on down here where it matters the most? You betcha. Oh yeah, so if you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and if you like today's video, hit the like button. Let's get to work. If you can do this movement when this video is all done, right here, rolling to the instep of your trail foot, and you can do that through the entire release point of your golf swing, you are going to be blown away the very next time that you step foot on the driving range and you start following this protocol that I put into place and you start hitting golf balls, because guess what? It helps you slow the body down. It helps you release the hands and the arms and the golf club at the correct time, all by just thinking about what your trail foot is doing in the golf swing. Pretty crazy, huh? Now, why would I wanna slow things down at the right time though? Why do I wanna slow the body down when everybody in golf instruction has always taught me that I need to keep turning my body through the hitting area, right? We've always been told, turn our chest in the direction of the target. I'm not gonna argue with that. That is something that definitely happens in the golf swing for sure especially at high rates of speed. But what I want you to remember is, is that if you turn your body through the hitting area and you don't allow your arms to release and your club to release at the right time, then what you're gonna be doing is, is you're leaving yourself subjective to the club rotating at the same rate that your body can turn. Which, to be honest with you, is not that fast and not that efficient. But now what I want you to think about is if my chest, when it gets back to pointed at the golf ball down here on the ground, if I stop the body from moving and the hands and arms start to release, one of these movements can produce a whole lot more speed and move the club a lot faster. And on top of that, something for all of you golf instructors and students of the game to understand is that by stopping the body from rotating and then allowing it to turn and follow the hands and arms post impact, you're now taking a lot of the stress off of your spine. Your spine hates two things. It hates sheer force and compression. And in the golf swing, that's exactly what rotation is, is it's gonna create sheer force and compression on the spine. So by turning your body violently through the point of contact or where the point of contact should be taking place is not necessarily what I would consider the optimal way to swing the golf club from an efficiency standpoint and from a safety standpoint. So now, thinking about what I just gave you for information, Without being able to have force plates and without being able to understand what your equation really is made up of, we can still apply the brakes just like you would see of all of the great ball strikers that we have in the world today. And so what I want you to do is I want you to watch TV. I want you to watch golf on TV, both men and women. When they're hitting a stock iron shot or a stock hybrid or a stock fairway wood, most of the time what you're gonna notice is, is that the trail foot is rolled in at the point of contact. It is on the floor, but it is rolled to the instep. It is not up off the ground at all. Why is it rolled to the instep? Well, this is helping them stay down in the shot, but it's also helping them slow the body down and help release the club. But one of the things that you wanna understand is that it's not just on the floor at the point of contact and then kicks up immediately. It stays on the floor and acts as a break while we're letting the hands and arms pass in front till the release is fully done. And then at this point, as the hands and arms start moving up into finish, now we rotate up onto the toe, and that's exactly how you would create efficiency in the swing. Okay, so I told you what, and I told you why. Now let's talk about how we're gonna get things done. Your job today is just to learn this movement from hip high to hip high virtually, okay? Once you get this movement from hip high to hip high, and you've become proficient with it, then what I wanna do is, is I wanna teach you what should be happening after the fact because the last thing in the world I want you to do is get really, really good results with this movement in this short condensed format, and then leave it deadlocked in the ground, and then start swinging with a whole lot more gusto and put yourself in harm's way. Very important that we protect and preserve your body. So all I want you to do at home is I want you to be able to stand up, and I want you to have yourselves in an upright position with proper stance width. And all I want you to be able to do is start getting comfortable with the movement that you're gonna feel when we go into golf posture here in just a minute. So I just want you to roll to the instep. And I want you to imagine that you have a Fabergé egg, your grandmother's favorite Fabergé egg planted underneath the outside part of your trail foot that if you had any sort of pressure on it at all, you would break it and you would break her hard. So I just want you to be able to do this movement right here just for a minute. Now I know a lot of you at home are probably thinking to yourself, well, look at all of that lateral movement, all of that horizontal movement. 
or that sway that he's teaching us right now. I'm not teaching you to sway, calm down. Okay, we're gonna balance this back out in just a moment. I'm just teaching you how to get comfortable with what you're gonna be feeling when it's go time. Because that is so much horizontal movement, what do you think that we have to do in order to be able to balance that equation back out? Well, we better add some rotational movement and some vertical movement to be able to offset it so that we're not sliding ourselves way out past neutral or sliding ourselves into this position where we're gonna blow out our hip girdle. How I want you to be able to do this is I want you to be able to make a post-up move happen. Now, I'm not going into all of the semantics of post up here today. That's just gonna to be too much for you to think about when this is all said and done. I have already published a video on post up a few weeks ago. If you have not seen that video, then I would suggest that you hit the stop button, click the link in the description below, go watch that video, and then bring your booties back over here right away to watch this video in its, in its entirety so that you can start blending and marrying these things together. Under no circumstance, when this drill is all said and done or when today's video is said and done, do I want you thinking about both sides of the body here. We're gonna be thinking about the trail side of the body through impact at high rates of speed. We're gonna be thinking about your trail foot and your trail arm you should be very proficient with what you're doing with the lead side when you start taking on something like this. You got it? Okay, I'm glad we got that straight. What we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be working on rolling to the instep in golf posture and posting up simultaneously. But we're gonna immediately pick up the golf club and we're gonna be doing hip high to hip high swings. I don't want you doing movements with your arms across your shoulders for this one, just because I want this to become as relatable to what you're gonna be trying to do on the driving range or the golf course as quickly as humanly possible. Now what I want you to do is I want you to get yourself into golf posture and I want you to grab like a seven or an eight iron. And all I want you to be able to do is I want you to be able to make a little pressure shift onto your trail side and get your club to swing back to about parallel to the ground. From here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep it chunky and we're gonna roll to the instep and post up simultaneously. And then we're gonna let our arms release through to the other side. Okay, so we're gonna let our wrists and forearms rotate and we're gonna let our arms extend to where our hands are now at pocket height on the lead side of the body and the club is parallel to the ground. Okay, so my right foot is still on the ground. It is rolled to the instep. And we're gonna do this for 10, 15 reps or so. And as you do these reps and you keep them slow and chunky, okay, so you're gonna roll to the instep and let the arms swing over to the other side as you post up. So it's roll to the instep and let your arms swing through to the other side. What you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna be able to make this a fluid movement, okay? And you're gonna have this very big desire to start picking your trail foot up off the ground, put it back down on the ground. If you notice that you do a rep where you swing through and your foot's up off the ground like this, put it back down to the ground, fix the position. Why? Well, because you wanna train your body and your brain what it is that you're trying to get done and be disciplined. Do not try to put the gas on too quickly in this video. You wanna be able to be perfect with this movement. Okay, so we're gonna do three or four reps just from hip high to hip high. Okay, so back check, make sure it's on the ground. Do another one, okay? Hip high to hip high swings. Okay, now, you've got a very good feel for this you can actually start hitting some golf balls in those little small swings if you feel like that's a good way for you to move through this process. I personally like to get people past this as quickly as possible and get it somewhere into kind of like a nine to three swing. Now, when I say nine to three swing, I'm talking about a chest height to chest height sort of swing. So if I was a clock, this would be nine o'clock and this would be three o'clock. I want you to understand that we're just trying to make smaller swings here. Now, when you do this, it's very important that when you start focusing on moving through the point of contact and your hands start swinging past this hip high position up into three o'clock, that what I want you to be able to start doing is rotating up onto your toe because eventually what you're going to be is into this full finished position, fully up onto the toe where you shouldn't have a whole lot of creasing in your toe box. But how I want you to train this piece is I want you to think about doing this trail arm and trail foot only at first. Yes, at first I have you put the golf club in there just to train these sort of small movements, but now I want you to put the golf club down and I want you to do 10 or so reps, put your lead hand in your pocket or behind your back. And I want you now to take your trail arm with your palm and your forearm facing out in front of you. And I want you to roll to the instep. So this is gonna be the decelerator. And I want you to take your trail arm, which is gonna be called your accelerator. And I want you to accelerate it through to where it would be at pocket height on the lead side and make sure that it's down. 
Now, as you start doing more reps here, I want you to start making it a little bit longer. And as your arm starts getting up past that point, as I want you to start allowing yourself to swivel up onto your toe as you go a little bit further. Okay, it's gonna give you a little bit of freedom of movement here. Okay, now you can start to feel it. Now you start making the swing kind of like this full nine to three and you've got it all timed up. So you can start feeling the fluidity. Now you've got yourself a good visual. Now, pick the golf club up immediately. The reason why I'm having you follow this protocol is because a lot of you are gonna try to deadlock that foot on the ground and not know when it's time to start picking it up. By putting the club down and starting to feel when the right arm passes that sort of position, it's okay for you to start to rotate up on the toe. Now you can start making the golf club come back into the mix and start adding the whole speed back to it. So let's do 10 or so reps from chest tight to chest tight or nine to three, trying to now focus on the trail foot rolling to the instep, but now rotating up as my hands and arms pass that pocket height on the lead side of the body. So we're gonna go slow. We're not doing big high speed reps here, okay? So we're gonna do 10 reps. So we're gonna roll to the instep, accelerator moving up past that position and rotates up onto the toe a little bit. So you're learning good footwork through the point of contact, through the release and into your finish, okay? And you're just gonna do this for several reps. Now, I've gone through that entire protocol. I've got myself in a position where, all right, I've got this, I feel this. I'm gonna start hitting golf shots. I want you to work off of ratios. Today, for time's sake, we're gonna work off of a one-to-one -one ratio. Normally, if it was just me out here in the camera and you guys weren't here with me, I would be doing somewhere close to like a seven, eight, nine, 10 to one ratio because I'm working on training a new movement. I want my practice session when it's all said and done to have at least 100 very good high quality reps in there, somewhere between 100 to 300 reps. So that requires you to hit less balls early on in the process and get more good quality repetitions in. So we're gonna do a one-to-one -one ratio. We're gonna focus on feeling the decelerator and then the accelerator moving through that position up into finish. And we're gonna try our best to do that with a golf ball being present. Okay, so making a good swing. Okay, trying to feel those movements. Okay, so there you have it. There's your drill. I want you to take your time. There's a reason why I have you follow this sort of protocol. For those of you that go out there and make your practice sessions really meaningful, where you go out there and you have a purpose, you're going to get that 1% better every single time you practice. That's what it's all about. You're not going out there and trying to get all of this in one day. Try to get just a little bit better every time you practice and the sky's the limit.